Hello everyone, here is a video on how to upgrade or replace the hard disk in this HP Notebook 15 and then dash AC121NA otherwise uh, the part number N7J56EA and then hash ABU the hash ABU is probably specific to the UK or EU uh, if you're in a different region that number on the end is probably uh, related to your region two things to watch out for and I will say this now in case you don't watch the rest of the video there is a screw hiding under there and there is a screw hiding under there HP are very good at hiding the screws underneath stickers and um, feet of the laptop and stuff. First things first, eject the battery and I will start with the two hidden screws. There's one And there's the second one. Next, this screw in the middle, which will release the DVD drive. And then just slide the DVD drive out. This screw here, and then there's two up here, which I'll also undo. While I'm doing that, I will tell you about the data that will be on the drive, which is already in here. You will either need to have cloned that onto your new destination drive using a USB to serial ATA device or in a, I don't know, a drastic move you could create a Windows install USB and then install Windows from scratch and uh, start again which is uh, probably a good idea depending how much junk's on your computer. What I will be doing here will be taking the old drive out. I will then be cloning that old drive using a different computer onto the new SSD and then I'll be putting the SSD in. I find that method for the way I work uh, is quicker and easier than installing cloning software on the uh, old slow hard disk while it's running in the laptop um, and then doing the clone. I'd rather take the drive out of this laptop, clone it on a much faster computer and then put the new drive into the laptop again. That is all of the screws on the underside of the laptop undone. Now we need to open the laptop and between the palm rest and the black underside of the laptop we need to get a spudger or something very thin. Don't use a knife or a screwdriver because it will damage the plastic. So this is quite flexible and I have a lot of trust in this device not um, screwing up the cases of laptops and other things. So it's going to run along unhooking the front of the laptop. Then I'm going to go down the side with the least amount of connectors on it, which will be this side. doing the same thing. And then I'm going to rotate it again and go down the side with all of the connectors on it. Weirdly that USB port there is looking quite rusty so I wonder if this has been in a, a wet laptop bag or a damp environment. But Then 
There we go. I'm now going to close the laptop again and gently wiggle and lift up the case. There's going to be clips along the back here which are going to be the uh, there we go, the difficult bits to undo. So I'm just kind of putting pressure towards the back and lifting up. And that is the underside of the laptop removed. And here we have the laptop. Let me see if I can sort out the brightness. What we've got, the hard disk, which is what I'm going to be swapping out. USB board with power and hard disk LEDs on it. Little fly lead from the motherboard going into where the DVD drive plugs in. That is probably the keyboard connector there. RAM, which has got one already populated and a spare one on this machine. Um, speakers here. CPU is under here. That will be BGA array soldered onto the board. You cannot upgrade that CPU unless you've maybe got a BGA solder rework station, which is unlikely. Wireless um, card. Interestingly, with only one aerial, normally there's at least two outputs on there. In fact, there's a second output there, but it just doesn't have um, anything to plug into it. So it's a bit, bit poor. And I was wondering also while it was uploading earlier, um, why my remote session to it was laggy. That's probably because it's generally got underspec Wi-Fi. You've got the BIOS battery here, touchpad buttons there, and the touchpad itself all buried under there. Um, CPU fan, video connector, almost certainly, and um, that's probably about all that's interesting on that. Four screws on the hard disk, sorry, three screws, one, two, three, and then there's, in fact, it looks like there is supposed to be, uh -huh. when uh, the case is on, there is a fourth screw, but it goes all the way through the uh, the case of the laptop. So that's those three screws undone. I can now just gently lift that up and I'm going to flip it over and gently undo whilst being aware that it's got a ribbon cable there that's probably quite delicate. Uh, gently undo that serial ATA connector. And now I'm going to do the swap of the bracket before I do the clone. So there's four screws that are on this metal bracket. The, the metal bracket is in two different sides. So that'll go on that side there. Putting these uh, brackets on where they're not uh, one big bracket that goes around the laptop can be quite tricky because you have to line them up multiple times and hold the bracket and hold the screw and hold the drive at the same time. Using gravity can be helpful and also, like you can see here, having a magnetised screwdriver can also be really helpful because it saves you having to hold the, uh, the screw as well.
that's now ready if we wanted to reinstall fresh we just plug that in put the machine back together plug in our windows install usb and uh, probably press f9 while turning it on to uh, boot off of the usb and install fresh what i'm going to do now is clone this drive onto this drive and then i'll resume my video once i've done that and show you how to put the machine back together uh, if this video has already been helpful to you, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. But yeah, hang around, and uh, once I've cloned this, I'll put the machine back together and show you that it works. Thanks. Right, we're back with the data clone to this drive. It's going to be as simple as plugging the drive back into its serial ATA connector. dropping it securely down onto the pins that it sits on. Put the three screws back in to hold the drive in place. So that's the final one. This one here stays empty because that goes through the entire case when you put the case on. Put the case on, be aware of the uh, connectors on the edges. I've started with this edge which has most of the connectors and then hinged it down. Squeeze along all of the edges to get everything clipped back down and time to put all of the screws on the underside back in. When we get to this screw here, we need to make sure the DVD drive is in. And then we get to the two hidden screws, which are under the feet on the far edge. That's all of the screws done. Put the battery back in.
and we should now have a working computer. There we go. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notification switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thanks very much.